Welcome back YouTube to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you. I'm SB, I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, sharing my life stories with this vision syndrome, OCD and the like, along with tips and advice along the way for general health versus your mental health, as well as also just messages of hope to give you clarity and understanding, hopefully to give you as much support as I can as your mental, if they get whatever label mentality you want to give me right now. As you know, as I said before, when almost nearing the end of this month of autism awareness and acceptance month, I'm going to call it with a triple A as one of the people I've been following, which I actually like the idea of being, you know, having that form of day called as this officially. Maybe we could try and do it that way. But as I said, I'm trying to jazz it up with another variation of topics that can come from my Beauty From Ashes channel versus just any other topics that I can think of right now. So that hopefully, even though I was trying to do the better challenge as well on top of this positive awareness month, regardless, so that hopefully we can give some variation and understanding of differences of opinion versus whatever. So as I said before, some of these are based on my life experiences versus basically my training and everything else. So give and take of what I share with you all. I humble apologize in advance if you feel it's not for you, by all means you can accept to reject or reject to accept or vice versa just by you know passing the message along or certain messages that may be coming through on my beauty from ashes playlists but and all further ado though, I feel that sometimes some of the topics that comes close to my head to share is for us to learn and understand from each other and some of this is still a learning curve for me of what I share with you all based on my life experiences regardless of the topics that it comes out of your way. Today, today I'm going to be sharing with you all the five love languages obviously many people might go what the hell now? or whatever it may be that's running through your head but I feel that this is needing to be shared and addressed because you know as I said before in some parts of my relationships playlist on the beauty formations obviously that many people tend to misunderstand or not know the differentiation of love versus relationships and everything else in between and I believe that you know there is someone for everyone you know regardless of what seeking out reaching out finding someone you know, to be in our lives, regardless what it may be, sort of thing. So, this obviously five love languages that came about in 1995 by a guy named Gary Chapman, who obviously stated that this is due to creating this due to a lot of patterns that has gone about where partners in different type of relationships that ex quo usually will complain about different, you know, type of things that wasn't given to them or whatever it may be. So basically also, this was also done to try and save the relationship or whatever status quo it was at that given moment of time that people were in, so to speak, so that hopefully that will become better. Even though sometimes we may fall in love and then we, you know, fall out of love and whatever else it may be, but this can actually come into practice and actually do well in a way of it if we do choose to use these five love languages that Gary Chapman put into place for our exercise of our way of our relationship how it got so obviously you know the five there that I can recall are number one is your word of information this can be gentle request from your loved one or it can be just you know certain words of encouragement basically that we can give to our loved one regardless of what it may be you know it can be words of affirmation saying that we love them or just certain things the way we act around them and the way of our word of affirmation you know even though that comes into obviously the next one which is the acts of service which I unblock follows but with the question this is a way of expressing to our partner you know in a way of expressing love through encouragement and being humble through those words regardless what it may be we need to be genuine about it on how we feel every love language will be different of these five parts just to be in mind also and the question will be i want to throw at you before i continue on what i can recall is what is your five love language you know we shouldn't have to you know stop there with the, that five language we should try and bring them all in together next one is as i shared was your acts of service this means basically we can ease the burden 
To give you a better understanding of these five love languages, I'm going to go into more depth now in these each steps, so please bear with me on this of what I can recall of it all from what I've shared with you previously. So the first one was obviously, as I clearly mentioned or illustrated to you all, is words of information. So this one is obviously, if you feel that this is your primary love language for when we're doing these five languages, then the unsolicited words of compliments may mean the world to you basically more than the actions obviously that's put into place so therefore for information it's defined as to affirm something is to confirm its truth and to strengthen it so whenever you say something good to your spouse partner or whoever it may be think of it as adding value to their self actualization versus their self-worth and everything else if it was like a form of a compliment or what have you Think of it this way though, it's expressing love emotionally because the word speaks to the soul and heart of the person. Telling your partner how much you love them, how much you appreciate their presence in your life, how beautiful they are or handsome they are. As basically Dr. Chapman talks about King Solomon's words of wisdom, when Solomon said that the tongue has the power of life and death. So what we say and do obviously will determine that obviously the words can do more damage than good if we are not careful the way that we speak to our partners can provide them life or emotional death don't underestimate the power of words however especially if your partner's primary love language is obviously the words of information because something that you might regard as petty such as i love you could actually mean the world to them we tend to say you got me now now what more do you want so maybe here's some tips to just illustrate to you all by start practicing today to say things like I love you, you are beautiful, handsome, you look great in that suit, you look great in your outfit you're wearing, I really appreciate you washing the dishes tonight, thank you for taking care of the children, you're a great cook, etc, etc. When you provide positive words, however, to your spouse, they are more likely to do the same for us. However, we need to be careful not to think of this as a bastering system where we can give and take, but as an investment towards a loving and fulfilling relationship to grow and blossom. Don't forever do this as a favor or to flatter your spouse to get what you want, but to do this unselfishly for yourself. Words are a reflection of our own thoughts and how we feel about ourselves as well. Positive words come from positive thoughts, negative words come from negative thoughts. It's that really that simple, however. Watch these the words that come out of your mouth and you will give a good idea of the direction where your thoughts are facing and as a result, your life is facing. A quote to remember by and is, an anxious word wears a man down, but a soft answer turns away any wrath. This ends. Acts of service. A question to ask you all is, do you ever feel really good when your loved one does something for you, regardless of what I've clearly addressed in this one? This could be something as simple as doing the dishes without being told, washing the car or preparing dinner for you. If you have answered yes to this, then your love language could be the acts of service. Acts of service is one of the five lang languages that has been used by Dr. Gary Chapman that has been described in his book. This love language is all about making the person feel loved by helping them in any way that you can without having anything given back in return. This type of person enjoys hearing the words, how can I help you, or what could I do to make your day easier for you. If this is your spouse's primary love language, nothing speaks as loudly as these acts of service. You may give them the words of information, but they're thinking, cut the talk, if you love me, do something around here. For these kind of people, action speaks louder than words. Think about how you feel when you go into a restaurant and the waiter says to you, may I take your order? Or are you ready to order? They say it with so much anticipation as though they would rather take your order than do anything in this world for you. This is what your spouse, whose love language is acts of service, wants to hear from you. They need a helping hand with love and as you continue to serve with love, you fill your spouse's emotional bucket up. Discovering how you can best do something for your spouse will require some time and creativity on your part. You need to show your spouse that you've put the effort to what you have done, not just doing it because you, it had to be done, or as I said, out of your ruthless time, however. However, careful not to rub it in their faces because it will, however, lose its meaning. I bought your breakfast in bed, so you owe me one. Dodger Chapman talks about acts of service as an expression of love, not slave driving around. 
When we treat ourselves as slaves, we remove the possibility of love because we remove their freedom. Saying if you were a good spouse, you would do this for me is not the language of love, but a form of manipulation. If acts of service are to be acts of love, they must be freely given. Here are some useful tips. During the colder months, put the towel in the dryer while the spouse is showering so that it is fluffy and warm when they get out. Clean the kitchen or the bathroom. Fix things that others can't fix. Carry the groceries in. Cook a special meal that you know they like. Fill up your spouse's petrol tank without being asked. Drop your spouse at the door when it's raining. Buy or make lunch and bring it to work for him or her without having to be asked of one of the person that may be in that relationship that does most of the, you know, work in the house, for example, doing chores or whatever it may be. This will obviously lessen the load for them as well, as well as also for this act of service, this will require time, energy, and planning to convey the affection or love towards your partner. Receiving gifts. Do you feel most loved when someone brings you gifts or some intangible, tangible item, no matter how small or inexpensive what it is? If you answered yes to this, it is probably meaning that you receive that you receiving gifts is one of your love language. It is not your primary love language, however. Or if not, maybe it is your primary love language. However, I think it will be enlightening to have an understanding what a gift is, however. According to the Thesaurus Dictionary, a gift is something that is bestowed voluntary and without compensation. Hence, it is clear that a gift should be something that is not coerced, but something given freely and without preconceived expectations of something to give in return. In all cultures, there is an aspect of gift giving, and it is apparent that gift giving is a fundamental part of showing our appreciation and or love. In the larger scheme of life though, gifts carry with it a lot more weight than just the gift itself. The appropriateness of a gift is based on many factors that I can think of, which is one, our relationship to the person receiving the gift, two, the occasion for the gift, three, how long have we known this person, four, our income, five, the other person's needs, six, and sometimes that we have to know what is given to others on a similar occasion. A gift is a symbol of thought of love, hence when you give your partner something from the heart it says, I was thinking about you. It is important to put these thoughts into a gift of terms of what is your spouse's favourite colour, what brand does do they like, and most importantly, can you afford it? I mean, can you imagine your spouse would feel if you went out your way and spent your least money on a gift? The idea is to be realistic, yet passionate about what you are giving, hence what I said before, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's not about the price tag on the item, hence the gift does not always have to be materialistic. It can be a, the gift of your presence. Your availability towards your spouse can be a gift on its own accord. You spend so much of our, you and our, our, you and myself may spend so much of our time running around between work, children, friends, extended family, etc. And we hardly take the time to spend for our partners or with our partners. Often if you keep is open you will as you spend time with your spouse you will hear what they want when you hear these comments take a mental note or write it down for future keeping so that once that time comes again that maybe you can meet that need of course for some people giving comes naturally because of their personalities and background while for others it's a battle between a bunch of roses for my wife or the new towers for their spouse's car Unexpected and spontaneous gifts do wonders for your mates, love quotient, however. However, we need to be cautious about the whole gender issue. I know for a fact that if someone buys, you know, buys something like a new mop and a bucket as a gift, I won't be too thrilled. And I know many women out there would agree with me. Because obviously it means, you know, the house is too dirty or you need to do more cleaning. On the flip side, if I buy someone like a lawnmower, maybe he would be excited. Most men are more mechanical when it comes to gifts, while women like me would be much happier just receiving a card than a mop in a bucket or what have you. Yes, some females may want some things like expensive perfume and jewelry and whatnot, but be in mind. Gifts need to be given on a regular basis, but not always need to be bought. Here are some ideas for communicating with a mate whose primary love language is gifts. One, buy a box of chocolates. 
Two, serve them breakfast in bed. Three, make his favourite meal. Four, pick out the clothes in the morning for him if he's not working and you're going out on a date. Five, send a romantic SMS or email while they're at work. Start doing this today and you'll be surprised at what a tremendous change you'll see in your partner and how happy they will be. And naturally, you'll start to enjoy the benefits of your investment because when your partner is happy, so will you be. This are a great way to go, you know, our love. But just to be a mind, don't miss, miss, mess that up with materialism, you know. Because should be special and have a meaning behind it to that person that you love and care about. And obviously, you know, within that, maybe it could be something that they needed or whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be ex too expensive and whatever else. Sometimes for this one, obviously, from the gifts can be from the heart. It's the thought that matters, matters the most of how, how you, you know, went about expressing your love to them. Sometimes you can go the extra mile, obviously, for, for them if need be, basically. Maybe for the way of receiving gifts for them is maybe like a ticket of some sort or a little ticket you made yourself to go out for a meal or a movie or something, something like that. Right, next one obviously is what I've clearly illustrated is physical touch. Maybe a question to question you guys right now is how many times have you been hugged or you hugged someone today? Most people have believed that when we talk about physical touch, as I said, is the sexual interaction, taking yourself to the bedroom and just have sexual encounters with your partner or spouse. This is quite on the contrary, however, of this lang love language of physical touch. doesn't always re refer to that three-letter word that starts with the S and ends with the X, as well as the E in the middle. Sex is just one of the many aspects of the phys physical touch language, however. Physical touch is any gentle and loving touch which as I said before will range from a hug, a caress, a hand on the shoulder, pat on the back, a foot rub, holding hands, kiss on the cheek, running your fingers through someone else's hair. The examples are quite endless however of what I'm clearly illustrating. In the field of linguistics a single language may have five different dialects and likewise so does this love language that I'm clearly addressing to you of the physical touch that can be expressed in a variety of ways. The need to feel loved is a primary human emotional need and drive force. Hence, if you give your spouse their primary love language and heavy doses, the other four can be just sprinkled in. If your mate's love language is physical touch, your mate probably can't be touched enough. Often, many of times, well, many of us didn't learn to hug at all until we left home. We can learn this valuable love language of physical touch if we choose to. Gary Chapman is quoted in chapter 8 of page 116 of the book of the five love languages stated Emotionally, they yearn for their spouse to reach out and touch them physically. Running the hand through the hair, giving a back rub, holding hands, impressing sexual intercourse, all of these and other love touches are the emotional lifeline of the person whom physical touch is their primary love language. When you reach out with your tender touch, you create emotional closeness. This is especially true if the primary love language of your spouse is physical touch. You may say, what if I'm not just a toucher? I didn't grow up in a touchy feeling kind of family environment. The good news is that you can learn to speak this love language. It can begin with a pat on the back or putting your hand on the leg as you sit together on the couch watching TV. Perhaps you think this is a silly claim of endurance here though, but the the absence of regular touch can have an effect on one's emotions. However, touch and the social contact with a loved one, which accompanies it, are an important part of our physical and emotional health. Gentle touch, however, has been shown to facilitate physical and psychological functioning, particularly in terms of reducing stress, relieving pain, increasing the ability to cope, and general health ratings. Dr. Chapman relates this and how we instantly help one another in a time of crisis and the reason why we do this is because during these times we need to feel loved more than anything else in our world. The reality is that all marriages will experience this crisis however. Disappointments are a part of life. The most important thing you can do for your spouse in a time of crisis is to love them dearly. Your words may mean little but your physical touch will communicate that you do care. In a 
time of crisis, a hug is worth more than a thousand words. Physical touch is a powerful love language. Ask your partner basically what he or she likes in a way of this physical touch. This can be a, a range of close proximity and physical affection by just maybe cuddling, tickling one another, maybe just to hold hands. Um, quality time is an informal reference to time spent with our loved ones. It can be something such as our close family member, partners, friends, that is in some way important, special, productive, or even profitable. It's time that's set aside for undivided attention to people that we love. In most of these cases, it must be specifically our partners. Quality time may also refer to time spent performing some of our favourite activities together or on our own. However, we often make the mistake of thinking that quality time is limited to some of the everyday activities. Whereas, when you really think about it, you would realise that something as simple as talking can also be regarded as quality time spent with our partners. I'm talking about our real engagement with our spouse, as I said before, by removing technology out of the question and taking time out of your day, maybe talk to them or even just go outside and go for a walk together. When you ask relevant questions and show deep interest in what your partner is saying and how their day went, etc, etc. Secondly, most important, active listening. Most of the time that we claim to be listening to our partners, we're either doing the dishes, watching TV, or reading the newspaper, or whatever it may be, as a form of distraction. Whereas active listening is really paying attention, validating to what the person, other person is saying, and reflecting on what that their feelings are without interfering with them. Yes, I know it's hard, or you've had a hard day at work. I often find myself battling with the urge to say something that excited me while my partner is talking about their day and the itch to interrupt is so overwhelming. However, it does come with practice like anything. Think about it this way. Making t the time to do things that will secure our relationship the same way that we make time for our jobs and everything else that does matter and allows. Maybe we could schedule a weekend away just for the two of us. Write it on your calendar, put it on your computer planner, your phone, etc, etc. Don't change it for any other event. Make sure that that time is set separately for you and your spouse. You don't have to go anywhere in particular. Being married or living under the same roof doesn't always guarantee that you'll have the quality time with one another, even though, you know, time permitting, everybody's time schedule is different. If you're both busy, you have to plan to spend time together. Planning on its own could also be turned into an activity that allows both of you to maybe sit down together and share ideas on what your partner regards as quality time. See what they enjoy the most. Remember, your perception of quality time may not always match that of your partner's, however. Hence, one needs to verbalise their needs instead of just assuming that the partner knows what you like and what you want to do. However, when your spouse ask you to consider something that they like doing, you need to respect and validate what they are asking you in order to truly get how you can and what you can to best fit to satisfy their needs. Therefore, as I said before, communication is key here. List all the things that you enjoy, you know, and then maybe vice versa, let them list what they enjoy. Here are some quick ideas for you. Spend 20 time minutes in your daily dialogue. Arrange for a quiet evening once a week. Go for a walk every second Sunday. Go somewhere maybe that, you know, revisited of some of the places that you guys been to to spark off some romance. Maybe taking a shower together. Travel together whenever possible. You know, it doesn't have to be near, really far away. Scrabble, Monopoly, some sort of form of board game. Some form of sport that they may be into. Tennis, hockey, name it. It's not about the length of the list, it's all about being together and obviously the engagement together. It's not just proximity, but the sole focus of attention on each other. The goal is holistically putting it all together and loving the person that you are with. Taking that whole time period, the whole process in a relation of the relationship. Not a problem, that needs to be solved. Or a project. It's just you and your spouse that's more important. Well that ends basically quality time. As of asking you guys, you know, what is your love language that I clearly has addressed to you all today is maybe, you know, something to think about and answer to yourselves about to figure out your primary love language is number one. 
how did your parents, you know, while growing up, show love and affection, you know, towards you and towards themselves? What made you feel the most loved as a child? Because this maybe is important to think about, as this does speak a lot of volumes in the way of the love language that you may think of as yourself, you know, and the ones that I've clearly addressed. Number two, when you want to show someone that you really care about that person, what comes to your mind first that you should do to them? You know, as they say, sometimes action speaks louder than words, or words speaks louder than the action. But then again, you know, everyone's different, each to their own and their way of their love language. You know, it doesn't mean you should just, you know, knock them down and obviously do whatever you can. You know, you could question that, thinking, okay, you could show your appreciation to them and maybe make a meal. Especially if it's a husband that usually works, maybe the wife can do the meal. And maybe in return that the guy can actually, you know, juggle up his schedule and maybe just do the way he can in a way of compromising something else. Maybe given on the weekend, maybe that they can do something for you, per se. Last but not least is sometimes what we went through in our everyday life was so painful, be it regardless what it was in their life. Here's so maybe a classic example is that we've been abused in the past and we're finding it hard to trust and love somebody, even though it, it takes a while for that trust to come about. Maybe they have hurt us so deep in a way to break our trust or neglected us to the point that, you know, they didn't want to show or reciprocate some love towards us as well. Also, another food for thought, also, I'm going to talk about it as the love tank, obviously. But another thing, just to be in mind before I end this, also, just because you or your partner favour one particular love language, basically, that is clearly addressed today, doesn't mean you should stop expressing these other love languages. According to Gary Chapman, the one that I have shared with you, even though we tend to favour one language of the other, we should still enjoy the traits of the others as well, and actually put those into action as well to make our relationship stronger and better and knowing each other. It's all about knowing each other's, you know, quirks and everything else in between these five love languages. Well, this basically ends the five languages. Give me a like for thumbs up for support. Comment below. Feel free.